Hello everyone! Undertow Spillway finally got its rework, and today I'm here to review it because this is, uh, an interesting rework to say the least. And after I go over it, I kinda wanna give my thoughts on these stage reworks as a whole, because I think they're taking a bit of a different direction than a lot of people expected, and I wanna talk about if I think that's alright or not. So, yeah, it's gonna be a very opinionated video today. I hope you guys enjoy, be sure to subscribe if you wanna see more, and let's go! So, let's start by covering all the major changes with it. The first one is this left side of the map. It's greatly expanded with new areas behind it, new cover, and it just extending a lot more further forward in general, allowing you to roll all the way over here from that spawn area. They also added these little walls so that you wouldn't dodge roll off the map, which is funny. Additionally, this left side has also been expanded a little bit, mainly with this wall. While this may seem like a nice addition in some areas, mainly that it provides a little bit of cover in this area, this is actually here to prevent a jump, as normally you would be able to double squid roll and get up onto this area. But because this ramp is here, you're now no longer able to squid roll up. Meaning you now either have to climb this and fight like this, climb up early here, or go all the way around. Neither of these are really that difficult to do, but it is worth noting that it is going to slow people down compared to what they've been used to. Moving back to the spawn area, this left side has been changed slightly. The sponge has been made a bit taller, along with this wall here, which allows you to get back a little bit easier. And this ramp has also been slightly added here to make this a little bit more interesting of defensive terrain. Technically making it a little bit easier to go further and backward, but it's of the smallest of differences. The last major change before we get into the middle of the map is that this bottom right side over here now has uninkable surfaces directly under the ledge basically trying to mitigate the power of short-range weapons from sharking directly under the ledge, as they now have to be further backward in order to poke people from this position. This is a trend that Nintendo's done just in general. There is a lot of under-tall ledge positions that have uninkable floor under them, and it's just this pattern continuing. Why they feel this pattern is necessary in the first place, I have no idea. I kind of get that they might think short-range weapons might be really good down there, but it also just feels unnecessarily restrictive. The middle of the map only really has two major changes. The first of which is what everybody thought would be the pole, or potentially a block that could allow you to wall jump to the glass. Instead, it is a trench, a hole, I don't know what you guys want to call this, which does allow you to more freely move between each side, and if you're just trying to go through middle, I mean, it's a little awkward, but it's not that big a deal regardless. You can jump over it or kind of just jump around. It doesn't really change too much. Basically, just allows you to go through each of the mids. And the second change is this weird little underpass area down here. You can kind of hide behind this wall. It gives you a nice right peak angle in particular if you're pushing from this side. And if you go from the left, it allows you to move further left into this corner, making this a bit less of a bad position to be in since you have a fast option to get here. I think this tiny little change, as small as it is, is probably the best part out of this entire rework. It expands mid a bit, even if it's only one route, it adds a nice defensive position, and it just makes it feel a little bit wider, since this is of course mirrored also on the other side of the map, which is something I think the stage needs. That's really all the major changes though. Before I get into my other thoughts though, let's take a look at Rainmaker where there's a little bit more. On Rainmaker, this left side has changed to actually be a little bit better, as that annoying ramp thing I talked about earlier is gone, and there's now this block, which is only inkable on one side, as a bit of useful cover, which I think is actually a little bit better. However, that's not the main reason we're here. The right side route has actually been reworked entirely. It is now much wider with a pillow for cover and it is no longer uninkable surfaces, as well as adding this odd little ledge here, I guess. Outside of that, the checkpoint is still in the same spot and allows the same jumps it did previously, but this does rework the route a bit. This middle route is a lot easier at times, while also feeling a little bit less annoying, since it's not uninkable or really difficult to see. However, it does kinda indirectly nerf this far route. It doesn't make it useless, it's just a little bit less strong now that this side actually can allow you to just swim through. Which means on the defender side, if you wipe when the other team is here, they're now able to push much faster to go for a knockout, especially since this is very easy to do here with a bit of squid rolls to avoid having to climb the pedestal. I think it's a positive change to say the least. All right, so let's talk about my actual thoughts for a minute. And I want to be very straight up about this. I feel like this undertow change is so small that it barely constitutes being a map rework. Realistically, there were no extra routes added at all and very minimal terrain. Again, the only majorly impactful change I think the entire rework has is this little cubby area, which is 
is cool, but like if this is the only actual thing that majorly changes how the stage is played outside of one mode, then I think this is something that could have fit in a patch. And in fact, there was an early Splatoon 2 patch that changed stages a bit, including entire tower layouts on stuff like Humpback Pump Track and Starfish Main Stage that arguably did more than this rework. I would give the Undertow rework a solid, hey, I'm glad it happened over nothing, but I really wish we would just do a little bit more with the stage. Let's talk about reworks as a whole real quick. Nothing they did outside of the little ramp bit here was really a negative change. And honestly, even if small, the positive changes are still welcome. A little bit easier of a drop is great. And you know, I actually do like this little cubby area. I don't even know what to call it. What they did with the stage isn't bad, but I wanna ask, is it enough? Especially given a recent season that only added one map to this game, is this rework quality in a game where the quality of maps is one of its biggest problems enough? When Mahi's rework came out, I kind of gave it a pass. Like, yeah, it kept the Tower Rainmaker and Clan Blitz layouts the same, but it did at least improve them a bit. Clan Blitz had consistent access to the islands, Tower added a few new jumps to get further and back from the base, and Rainmaker, which had the least changes, was still kind of decent, let alone the zones layout, which did actually get some new jumps in terrain, as well as a massively expanded size. Mahi was definitely enough to classify as a rework, even if it what it did for the non-zones layouts definitely wasn't good enough. What we got for Mincemeat, and even more so honestly for Undertow, don't feel like reworks, they feel like slight adjustments. At least in Mincemeat's case too, the stage is visibly a lot bigger, even if the changes outside of that are kind of small. Undertow's barely feels like a real rework, and if this was a game that didn't have map design of one of its main problems, or a rotation system that really makes it important that most of the maps in the game are at least playable, then I wouldn't be having a big complaint about this. But that's not the world we live in. The maps are one of the biggest problems in Splatoon 3, if not the biggest, especially at a casual level where you don't get things like tournament map lists. And honestly, I think this rework is nowhere near enough. I don't think this is going to make the game that much more fun, especially for more casual players. Competitive players seem pretty open to testing out zones on this mode, and Rainmaker was already pretty common on it, so it's overall a positive for them. Even then, I don't think it helps that much. Yeah, I'm frankly kind of disappointed with this. It's also a feeling I've gone with the patch as a whole, where when it came out I was kind of feeling great about it, but then after actually trying it and seeing how little the changes were, I kind of thought, is this enough after three patches that haven't done much of anything for balance? And, you know, that's kind of the question I want to pose to you guys. How do you feel about the actual stage adjustments and balance changes over the last few months? Has it been enough to keep you interested in the game, or do you feel like there's less effort being put in than deserved? Because I don't know if my perspective is alone here. And if you're someone who's happy with it, I think that's great, and you should be. But for me, I don't know. I'm kind of worried if my standards are just mentally being lowered by how little quality we've gotten in changes in both of these fields. And I really thought about it more after having a more initial positive reception this time around. I've kind of just come to the conclusion that while the newer maps for Splatoon 3 may be a lot better, the core map design problems of the series aren't going to go away. And I think that means for the older Splatoon 3 stages in terms of getting reworks, there's not a lot we can hope for. Again, I think what I want for reworks is stages that are already mostly good. And in this case, I think this is where Undertow benefits a bit. Undertow zones, while having problems, was pretty close to being good. So these changes, even as small as they are, do go a bit of a long way for competitive play there. And that's why I think reworks to already pretty solid maps like Umami Ruins, for example, would feel a lot better than reworks to stages that need a lot of changes, like Eel Tail, Scourge, or Hammerhead. Regardless, any rework is nice to hope for, and really we don't know how many we have left, given that the next season could be the last season for this game which feels a bit depressing. But really, that's my thoughts on the map reworks as a whole for Splatoon 3. Outside of Mahi Mahis, which even then I think was lacking quite a bit, it seems like we're just kind of stagnant in, well, we built the stages this way in the first place, so it's too late to turn back from it now. And I just think that's a bit of an unfair perspective. We definitely could be doing a lot better compromises, but at this point, it seems like the direction the devs are set in is well set. So that's my thoughts. Sorry if it's a bit more of a downer of a video, but I feel I need to be more honest about my perspective on this given my thoughts on the map design as a whole with the series. So yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'm interested to see it, and I'll see you all next time.